citizens of the internet, welcome to Tomorrow Daily, the best deep talk show in the universe. I'm Ashley Skeba. And I'm Jeff Kanata. And guess what? What? Dreamtime is available. Our our good friend, uh, Sim Simsy. Yeah. Uh, he, Jonathan Sims, who was on our show, what, last week, two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. I think two weeks this Thursday. Two weeks yeah. this Thursday. Uh, you can check out Dreamtime. You literally can use uh, Google Cardboard. You can use Oculus. You, there, you can use VR, any, anything you want. Any VR. Uh, just go to wjsims.com. You can check that out. It went live today. Ready for headlines? Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, you know, autonomous vehicles aren't just the future of how I'm going to get around. It might also be the future of motorsports. Robo Race is a concept race series from Daniel Simon, a designer who has experience with futuristic vehicles. He worked on Tron Legacy and used to be senior designer at Bugatti. Robocar is the concept vehicle Simon created, and it takes advantage of being a driverless car in its design. Races without drivers can help push forward human-controlled race car technology, which we're guessing is the point of Robo Race. But this concept is still a render for now. Robo Race plans to host a series of events starting later this year. I kind of feel like if there's no driver in the car, they can push these things to the limit, right? Because safety kind of goes out the window. Yeah, and you can make them super aerodynamic, which is exactly what this is. I mean, this concept is so cool looking. Yeah, it you looks don't have like to fit a human being inside, so make it right. as fast as possible. And it's not dangerous for, for people. Wow. So I'm super into that. Uh, cool. I love it. All right, guys, if you have ever wanted to spend a night on the International Space Station, someday it might come true, but we're starting now this week with an expandable module heading up there. SpaceX's CRS-8 mission will lift off this Friday to supply the ISS, and if everything goes to plan, the Bigelow Expandable Activity Module, or BEAM, will be delivered with the rest of the cargo. BEAM is designed to test the viability of expandable modules, which would mean living and work quarters for astronauts that are much less expensive to launch. It's a two-year experiment, and BEAM won't actually be occupied most of that time, but if it is successful, it would be a really big deal for long-term space exploration. How expendable are we talking here? Are we talking vaulted ceilings and Vault a leg room? Uh, yes, of course, fireplace. King uh, side California queen beds? What no, are these are very small workspaces. Uh, I, I believe, I want to say it was like five, maybe five feet by seven feet I want a uh, space station uh, master suite. It's not huge. This is like a capsule. It's a little expandable capsule. Think of it as a small room. Hmm. I believe, I, God, I, you can watch on the video, there's a good kind of idea of size. But the really cool thing is, is it is a little bit more meteor absorbent. Like oh, that's good. So, which, which is meteor great. Meteorite, is good. <laughs> meteorite absorbent. Meteorite absorbent because the space station is hard. So yeah. um, it's really cool and I'm really excited about the idea of it getting up there and, and having them test it out. The room I live in now is not meteor absorbent. No. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Hey, which of these stories do you think we should uh, talk about long form for Thursday? I feel like we have to talk about, we have to talk about Beam. We yeah. have to talk about space. I, you know, space is one of our favorite topics. So yeah, let's uh, let's figure out if we can live there long term. If we can live if truly, can... actually live the dream of living in space, or yeah. at least spending a night there. Where's my Airbnb at? Exactly. And you can participate in that conversation. We'd love to hear if you think you can hang out in Beam long term. That's right. All you got to do is use our hashtag on Twitter, and that is Hey TD. Yeah. Use Hey TD. Tell us how much you'd pay for a night in a B in the Beam expandable module. If yeah. you use Airbnb. Airbnb! Like it? I love it. All right, guys, it's time for our phone talker for the day. We're continuing our theme of landmarks, points of interest, monuments, those types of things this month in April uh, with Nathan's photo, which he took on his Moto X. Nathan writes, hey, Tomorrow Daily, my name is Nathan. I snapped this photo of the Willis Tower with my Moto X first gen. While I was visiting Chicago last summer, of course, many people still call it by its original name, Sears Tower. You can see how windy it was by looking at the flags on the right. I really enjoy the show, and of course, you have my permission to use this photo. Nathan did all the right things. He sent in a picture of a landmark slash point of interest. Yeah. He gave us permission, told us what device he took it on, and then emailed it tomorrow at CNET.com. And he also gave us a cool little story about it. Yeah. You know, I took the uh, architecture boat tour in Chicago when I was there last year. It's fascinating. Yeah. It's a lot of really, good really there. cool stuff. I had no idea. It was a beautiful city, a beautiful skyline, but taking that tour and hearing about all the history of all the buildings, it's, uh, I can't re recommend it higher if you ever find yourself in Chicago. And make sure you visit the Willis Tower just like Nathan. Uh, that is it for today's show. Find us on social media. Yes. That is where we live. We love hearing from you guys on social media. 
Uh, yeah, tell your friends. Yeah, tell your friends about the show. Give the gift of Tomorrow Daily, tomorrowdaily.com. That's how easy it is to share. Uh, and that is it. We'll be back tomorrow with a brand new jacket of science fact, meaning science fiction like a delicious sandwich for you to eat. Ooh, yummy. But until then, be good humans. See you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>